Hello, everyone, and welcome. We will go ahead and get started. Um, tonight, we are sharing with everybody our Global Educators webinar. In the audience today as attendees, we have, um, we have new IRON members that have just joined. We have those who are interested in becoming IRON members. We have those from other organizations interested about our work. And I think we also may have some very experienced IRON educators here to um, share their resources and learn from others. So welcome everybody who has joined us today. We'll learn a little bit about who um, is attending in just a minute. Quickly before we jump right in, I want to give a quick overview of the Zoom webinar platform that we are using. If you have not used it before, Zoom is a fantastic platform for webinars and video conferences, especially connecting around the world. Um, a few quick tips for participating and navigating your Zoom platform. You will see on your screen, typically at the bottom of your screen, but it could be elsewhere depending on your device, you will see a black bar. In the middle of it, there are three icons. There's a chat icon. So hopefully all of you at this point have found the chat box. If not, please do so. This is where a lot of people will participate in the webinar and the discussions that will take place. So find and open your chat box and just another reminder to set your message settings to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see your messages. The next icon you see will be a raise hand icon. This is if, if there's a point in the webinar where we ask for you to ask a question um, or we ask for your input or comments on something, you can click the raise hand button and we'll be able to enable your microphone so that you can use your microphone and participate verbally. And then the last icon you see is a Q&A box. This can be used for asking questions, um, but it might just be easiest and most convenient to ask those questions in the chat box. But if you put them in the Q&A, we will get them as well. Also, um, if your connection ends up being slow, um, a few quick tips to close all unnecessary programs or things that are open on your computer. If it's still not working, you can restart your computer or try to connect directly to your router if possible. But one of the reasons we use Zoom is because it tends to work really, really well, even in areas and places of the world that do not have the best internet connection. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're gonna to start with a few quick introductions. We are going to learn a little bit about iEARN and the global projects that we have. We're gonna give you a tour of the Collaboration Center, which is the platform where all of our networking and projects exist. We are going to hear from you um, and hopefully get into a bit of a discussion share some resources with all of you and allow time at the end for any questions. On that note, as we proceed through the webinar, if any questions do pop up, feel free to type them in the chat box. Um, my colleagues who I'm going to introduce in a second are monitoring the chat box and they may save your question till the end where we can answer all of them or they may answer your question directly in the chat box. But feel free as we proceed to type any questions you might have into the chat box or jot them down for the end. All right. So a few quick introductions before we begin. Um, we are hosting this webinar on behalf of IRON USA and the education team. My name is Rachel Manley, and I am the professional development manager here at IRON USA. And I am joined today with two of my fantastic um, education department team members. We have our director of education, Jennifer Russell, and our membership manager, Nicole Weitzner. Um, and we also have um, another team member who supports development and communications, but she is unable to attend this evening. So I am going to ask um, Nicole to pop on quickly and say hello, and then Jennifer can say hi. Great, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, it's great to see you all in here. I hope you can hear me okay. 
Um, I'm excited to be joining my first webinar um, as part of the education team. And um, as Rachel mentioned, I'm the membership manager, so I support new members and um, continuing IRON members. Um, and I look forward to hopefully working with all of you and helping you um, get all of your students um, really engaged with IRON projects. Thanks so much. And I'll hand it over to Jen now. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer, and I work at Iron USA with uh, Nicole and Rachel. Um, thank you for joining us this evening or um, this morning, depending on where you, you are from around the world. Um, we are having the chat here in Zoom, but I'm also going to be managing our chat on Facebook with our, um, the rest of our global audience. Um, so you'll see us there in the chat here, but also on Facebook. Um, really encourage all of you to make the most of this time to ask questions and make connections um, at, after Rachel goes through some of the presentations. So thanks for joining. Great, so let's get started. We're gonna kick it off with a quick poll. So you will see a poll pop up on your screen asking you two quick questions to see who is in the webinar today. All right, I see some answers coming in. That's great. Let us know if you are not a member but interested, if you are a brand new IRON member, if you are an active and experienced IRON member, and what is your role? Are you a teacher, administrator? Are you representing an organization or nonprofit? Great, so it looks like we have um, a spread. We have a couple of non-members, but they're interested in iEARN. We have a couple of brand new members. We have a teacher, an administrator, um, a nonprofit representative. I can share the results quickly with everybody. Please continue to share your experiences and where you're coming from in the chat box as we proceed. All right, so let's do, especially because we do have some brand new members as well as um, non-members who are interested in learning about iEARN. Um, let's go ahead and do a quick overview about our organization. Um, IEARN, which stands for International Education and Resource Network, um, is exactly what it says. It's a network, a family of educators and youth around the world who are joining together on global collaborative projects to address some of our world's greatest needs. IEARN is um, happily celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. Um, IEARN began in 30 years ago in 1988. Um, when classrooms in New York created a connection with classrooms in the Soviet Union post Cold War and they connected on what then was very innovative technology. You can see in the picture um, a device called the Lumophone where they connected um, between New York and Russia and um, were able to transmit very rudimentary videos and pictures of themselves and exchanges. Um, and then over the last 30 years, this grew um, into a very diverse and rich network of, like I said, educators and youth in over 140 different countries speaking 30 different languages and engaging in global collaborative projects. So our network consists of um, many, many IRON centers, coordinators, and um, 
regional activities around the world. Um, here is just a glimpse at some of the iron centers that we have around the world. So we represent Iron USA, but we are part of a larger um, network of iron centers around the world that are helping to engage youth and educators in this work. So at the heart of what we do is our teacher designed and facilitated global collaborative projects. We have at any given time over a hundred different um, teacher designed projects that educators and classrooms and youth are engaging in and communicating in. All of these projects use um, the project based learning model, um, more specifically global project based learning. They are done primarily asynchronously, which means the classrooms that are joining in a project together do not have to be signed in and online at the same time, as there are varying time zones, varying school schedules, holiday schedules, classroom needs. Um, it is quite a challenge to be able to be synchronous in connection. Therefore, um, majority of our projects are done asynchronously, so classrooms can join and participate and communicate on their own time. We also have many classrooms that use our Zoom platform and other video conferencing platforms to be able to see partner classrooms face-to-face -face and synchronously. The projects consist of discussion forums in our um, protected secure platform, which is called the Collaboration Center, we will look at in just a minute. So each project has its own discussion forum where students post activities, post ideas, engage in discussion around various global issues and topics, and then they also share media, whether that is pictures they took, pictures they found, um, videos, PowerPoint presentations, all kinds of project work that they would like to share with their global partners. And all of our projects connect to a very diverse subject area and range, language, um, as well as the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Speaking of, um, for the longest time, I earn um, each project asks the question, how will this project improve the quality of life on the planet? And since the UN adopted the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, we have, sort, we have challenged ourselves and our organization to adopt these goals as well. So now each of our 100 plus projects are aligned to one of the 17 SDGs. And so at this point, I'm gonna stop and take another quick poll to see what people's knowledge and familiarity is with the SDGs. All right, go ahead and let us know if you are very familiar with the SDGs and use them in your classroom. If you've learned a little bit about them, you are aware of them but want to learn more, or you've never heard of them. Oh, great. We have a lot of SDG experts in this webinar. Okay, so you can say, see here, majority of people here today are very familiar with them and use them in their teaching and work. So now I'm going to call on those people who said that. Um, if you would, wouldn't mind typing into the chat box now, um, maybe one example of how you use SDGs in your work and your classroom. And if there is a particular SDG that you are focused on or you have um, focused a project on with your students, we would love to hear that. You can start a conversation about SDGs in the chat box. All right. 
So for those of you that are joining today or watching on Facebook Live that um, might be interested in joining IRON, but you are not a member yet, um, I can give some very brief instructions on how to join IRON. I will also do a virtual tour in just a minute and show you where you can go to sign up to be a member. But if you go to iEarn.org, that is where all of the information about IRON lives, as well as our collaboration center. And that is where you can connect and sign up as an educator. So you will find the spot that says not connected with IRON yet, and then click um, as an educator or an adult, and you will fill out all of the required registration to be able to become an IRON member. And then once you have joined, you'll get uh, various communications from us about how to get started in the project work. You can connect with other teachers in the teachers forum, which I will show in our virtual tour. And then there is a fantastic group of project facilitators that are attached to each of the projects that are a great resource for brand new members. All right, so after becoming a member, um, one of the next big steps is and questions that our teachers ask themselves is how do I choose a project? There are over a hundred projects in the Collaboration Center. How am I gonna choose one of those? What questions do I ask? What do I look for? How do I get started? Um, and so one of the first steps is choosing which project works for you and which project you are going to join. So some piece of, pieces of advice on doing so is to spend some time reflecting on your classroom goals and objectives and help that guide your project selection. Consider your students' interests and choice. Many of our educators do give their students choice in projects, whether it is selecting the project itself or choice in activities once they are participating in a project. Choose a project topic that integrates themes you've already planned for the year. This doesn't need to be a whole extra program and workload for you as a teacher. So go back through your curriculum and your work plan for the year and find areas, themes, topics, projects that already exist that you can bring into the global world that you can bring into a global project um, and make it fit into what you are already doing. Okay. And I'm actually going to skip that poll for a second and come back to it. And I am just going to spotlight a few of our projects for you, and then we will do a virtual tour of the Collaboration Center. And I love that I see some SGG conversations going on in the chat. Keep that up, and we will stop in just a few minutes to continue that conversation. All right, so just to spotlight a few of our projects um, that are happening this year and you can join as a teacher with your students. The first is the International Book Club. This is a fantastic project for those of you that already have certain books in your curriculum that you're reading or those of you that would like to incorporate new literature and new books that are aligned with different global issues and global themes. In the International Book Club, um, students can, or teachers can partner with one or two other classrooms around the world and choose a book to read together, or you can join, they have, I think, four or five featured books, and you could join that existing book club. Similar, there is an international film club, and this is essentially the same as the book club, except with film and documentaries. So classrooms in this project will watch the same film together, and engage in discussion around that film or documentary. Dreamline is one of our projects that um, features an activity where students create dream flags. So they learn about the SDGs and global issues around the world. And then they create a flag, a physical dream flag, where they draw pictures and write their wishes and dreams for the world and then they align it with one of the SDGs. 
and then they share those amongst the project um, and engage in comfort conversation about um, dreaming of a better world, about um, their dreams and hopes for themselves and their community, as well as um, next steps for taking action for those things. Our Girl Rising project focuses on the documentary that many of you are familiar with called Girl Rising that follows the stories of four or five young women around the world who are facing various challenges and um, overcome these challenges as young, strong women. And in this project, the classrooms that are joining watch a portion of that documentary and then engage in discussion around what they saw in the documentary as well as sharing, comparing, and contrasting um, challenge gender issues and challenges around the world. All right, the holiday card exchange. This is one of our few projects that actually includes something physical outside of the online space because classrooms actually get to mail holiday cards to one another. So they create um, a large amount of holiday cards and they can select any holiday that they celebrate in their, in their country, in their school, in their community, and then they ship them around the world. So classrooms get, the classrooms will get holiday cards from various countries around the world. All right, we are excited to feature a brand new project in our collaboration center this year that is called Design Squad Global. And this is a project that is done very commonly in after school programs, but also in the classroom. And it is a project that is focused on STEM and engineering. And students in this project are given design challenges to create new and innovative designs to solve various problems around the world. And one of our long-standing popular projects is called One Day in the Life, and this is a fantastic way for students to express themselves through photography, through video, through drawing, and share a small snippet of their daily lives with others around the world. And lastly, the last project I want to spotlight is our Finding Solutions to Hunger, Poverty, and Inequality which is a project that focuses on researching, exploring, and examining hunger around the world, why it exists, um, and how we can address it both globally and locally in our own communities. Great, so that was a quick spotlight of some of our projects. As I said, we have over 100 different projects in our collaboration center that match to a diverse range of subjects and a diverse range of um, SDGs and global issues, as well as a range of time commitment for the teachers and timeline for the project. So before we jump into our virtual tour of the Collaboration Center, I do want to take one more quick poll to get a sense of what uh, age levels you teach if you're a teacher or what age levels you support as well as what subject areas you teach or are interested in. And I can point out during our virtual tour some great projects that might be good for you. All right, so here's our last poll of the night. All right, it looks like we have a lot of middle and secondary educators here. Oh, we got a primary and elementary popping up. That's great. I'm actually a previous elementary school teacher. So I get very excited when I see um, elementary teachers exposing this work to younger students. 
All right, I'll just give one more minute to finish that poll and we can share it out with everybody. We have a big range of subjects, which is fantastic too. We have some language arts teachers, some EFL or ESL teachers. We have a couple science and math, art, social studies. Looks like we even have a special education teacher in the room, which is fantastic. I am also a previous special ed teacher. Great. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a virtual tour of our collaboration center. And as we um, look for some of the projects, I'm gonna keep in mind the um, age level and subject areas that everybody teaches and hopefully can point out a few places where you can search specific to your grade level and subject, as well as maybe spotlight a few additional projects for you. All right, so iEarn.org is where our collaboration center lives. And I am actually going to log out so you can sort of see what anybody would see who's not a member. Um, and iEarn.org, as I said, is where all of the information about iEarn lives. You can look at our news and updates and stories. You can search for countries that are participating in the network. Um, and then most importantly, this is where our collaboration center is housed. So if I go to collaboration, and if you are not an IRON member, um, you have limited access once you get into the collaboration center. As you can see at the top, there is a secure login with a username and password that those who are members can sign in. But if you are not a member, you still can search all of our 100 plus projects and get information about them, learn about them, um, so that if you do become a member, you uh, have a good understanding of the projects and you can go in and have access to joining them. Because once you do log in and are in the Secure Collaboration Center, that is where you can access the forums and where all of the student activity and virtual exchange activities are taking place. All right, so a few things that I wanted to show you. The first is um, if you go to projects in the collaboration center, this is where you can search specifically for projects or just explore all of the projects that are here. So you can search projects by keywords, you can search by age level, you can search by language, and you can search by subject. So if I am a um, primary school teacher and I want to find teacher or projects that are related to math, I can select those and hit search and it will give me any of the projects that are appropriate for primary school students and have some connection to math. So you can see there's quite a few here. Um, and you can see the languages, ages, and subjects list listed. Excuse me. And then once you click on a project, you can find out a little more information. So you can get a further description of that project. You can see who the group project facilitator is. And all of our facilitators are educators or previous educators in the IRON network that have created and are now facilitating these projects. So they are great resources if you want to learn more about a project or once you join a project and you want support in getting started. You can also click on the about resources and it will give you more detailed resources and ideas of what this project might look like in your classroom, what the outcomes are, what the SDGs are that it's related to, and any additional curricular connections or related links. 
So this is what a project space looks like. If you are not signed in to the Collaboration Center and not a member, you can get this basic information about any of the projects. I'm gonna go back. So I can switch up my search and I can search for um, any projects that are conducted in Spanish. Maybe I am a Spanish teacher or I live in a Spanish speaking country. I can search any projects that are accommodating and welcoming for Spanish speakers is another way that I can search. I can also, if I think, oh, I remember her talking about that dream flag one, I can type in dream into keywords. Oh, oh that's because I had it under Spanish. Type in dream. There we go, Dreamline, my apologies. Um, and Dreamline World is right there. And I can learn more about that project and how to get started. Great, once you become a member, that is where you will sign in. And once you are a member, then you do have access to actually joining projects. So I have all of my projects listed here on the dashboard. I have res great resources for getting started once I'm a member. So I can watch tutorials. I can look at the teacher's guide. Um, I can look at the new project book, which we just released. Um, so you can now download the 2018-2019 Iron Project Book. Um, and all of the projects in this um, both digital and printable book um, can also be found in that project search that I just showed you. And you can download this in um, Spanish as well. Also, once you sign into the Collaboration Center as a member, you can um, access any of these other resources. You can um, join the Teachers Forum which is an open discussion forum for all teachers in iEARN to reach out to one another, to network, to find partners, to find ideas for new projects, et cetera. And then once your students become a part of an iEARN project and get their own iEARN accounts, they can join the youth forum and connect and communicate with um, other youth around the world. And then the projects, I'll give you just a sneak peek of once you join and become a member, this is what the project space looks like. You now have access to the forum and you have access to news um, that the facil facilitators to go out or send out, sorry. Um, and I won't go all the way into the forums just to protect the, the privacy of our classrooms and students that are engaging, but you can see that oftentimes the forums are set up with folders with different topic areas and in these folders and these discussion spaces are where all of the virtual exchange happens, the discussions, the media sharing, et cetera. Great. All right, so if you are not an IRON member, um, again, I can show you now where to sign up now that I have my virtual tour up is right here. So if you come end up at the home page, and you click join and then you have educator or adults connect here and it will take you to a registration page for you to register to become an iron member all right so there is just a quick virtual tour and overview of the collaboration center both for those interested in learning more and those who are new members trying to navigate the space and find new projects So now we're going to take a quick minute before we jump into a discussion because that was quite a bit information. I do want to take a pause um, to allow anybody to ask questions that they might have at this point um, about joining, about what you saw in the virtual tour, about the projects. Um, please feel free to type them into the chat box or as a comment on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook Live. And I am going to take a minute to scroll through the chat and see if we have any pertinent questions right now.
As you are typing in your questions, I also see some great comments about um, ways that you've worked with the SDGs. I'm so excited to hear that so many of you joining today um, are not only familiar with the SDGs, but have used them in practice, either with other educators or yourself as an educator. So some of you are coming from other nonprofits that use the SDGs to train teachers. Um, some of you have used them as teachers. I see um, some of them attached to SDG 4. We see some people using another SDG 4, quality education, SDG number 13, climate action, and 11, which is great. Good, and just quickly, one more thing I can show you before I answer a question that just came in is on the SDGs, um, as I said, all of our projects are aligned to one or more of the SDGs, and you can see those listed on each of the individual projects, but also um, you can access a database or list where you can click on SDG and search our projects based on those SDGs. So I can do that here. And then I can click on an SDG and it will show me projects that are directly related to that SDG, which is a really great way if you're trying to fo focus on certain issues or certain SDGs to find projects to join that align. Great, so I have a question coming in um, asking, could we join a project anytime? That is a great question. Um, so majority of the iron projects are what I like to call hop on, hop off type of projects um, where you can really join at any time of the school year. Now there are times of the year where activity might be higher than others. Um, for example, when it is summer in the United States and also many places around the world, they're um, on holiday. Um, but for the most part during the school year, many of our projects you can join at any given time. Um, that is because the activities are themed around certain subject areas or theme areas that students can engage and um, get into discussion about. We do have some projects that work on a timeline and that'll be clear to you when you learn more about that project. It'll say the exact date or time that a project starts and then it'll say that you need to sign up by a certain time and it'll show you a timeline of events. But I would say that's just a few of our projects and most of them you can join at any time of the year. We have many teachers that will do projects just for a week or two some that'll do it for a month, some that'll do it for a semester, and some that'll do it for a whole year. So you can really decide um, on what makes the most sense and meets the needs of your schedule and your classroom. Great. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's any more questions coming in right now. And I knew just as I said that there would be some coming in, which is great. Um, do we have a limited number of students for projects? No, you can add as many students as you want under your account and as many students as you would like can join a project and participate. Um, we have some classrooms that might do a project across a hundred students in different class periods. And then we have some teachers that might do a project with four or five students. So it really is up to you um, and how you would like to engage your students. I would say on that note that um, it's important to take into consideration how the partner classrooms in your project are participating. If you have a classroom of 50 students and all of the other classrooms in the project only have 10 students, um, then there is going to be an uneven balance of activity and communication in the project. So then you might want to consider how you can make that more balanced and maybe have your students work in small groups, um, post, post as a group, etc. But that's something you can determine once you have joined a project 
and you see who, um, what other classrooms you are working with and partnering with. Great questions. Okay, so I would love to um, hear from all of you that are here a little bit more about projects you are doing, um, about challenges in your classroom and ideas you might have. Um, so I would love to jump into a little bit of a discussion. Um, so you have two ways to participate in this today. The first is in the chat box, as we have been doing. So once I jump to the first question, um, feel free to type your answers into the chat box as well as um, comment and respond to others. This can be a dialogue between everybody as well. The other way that you can participate is we can unmute your microphone if you have the capability of using a microphone and you can share with us verbally so we can actually hear from some of you, which would be great. If you want to do that, if you have a microphone attached to your computer or device, please click the hand raise button that I showed you earlier so that we know that you would like us to unmute you and let you share verbally. All right, so the first thing that I would love to hear from everybody here is, have you ever connected with a teacher or classroom from another country? It doesn't have to be with iron, it can be in any way. And if so, tell us a little bit more about it. What was it, who did you connect with? So I will give everybody just a minute to think about this. And if you would like to share, if you have connected with a teacher or classroom from another country, please tell us about it. Great, I see some ideas coming into the chat box. That's fantastic, we'll take a look there. And if you would like to test out your microphone and, and say hello to everybody online, um, you are welcome to rate, click your hand raise button and we'll give you the microphone or you can let us know in the chat box that you would like to do so. Also, if you're, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, please go ahead and participate by putting your comments on Facebook as well. Let us know if you have ever connected with a teacher or classroom from another country, and if so, tell us about it. All right, so Cecilia is letting us know that she used to work in Costa Rica um, and she worked with teachers all over the world and she reached out to a teacher in Denmark. And so she had a partnership with a teacher in Denmark um, where their students were writing to one another. And Haifa did e-twinning um, and collaborated on a digital storytelling project integrating the SDGs. That's fantastic. Um, they had 11 teachers from eight countries from Europe, Asia and Tunisia. Great, and on Facebook, they're sharing that um, they did an online course with Iowa University. I actually did my undergrad at University of Iowa, which may be different. Great, Mohamedou um, was coaching girls um, in a technovation challenge, which sounds very exciting. Um, but the experience wasn't as great as he expected because he didn't have the internet connection he had hoped for. Um, great. Sometimes I know the internet connection can be a challenge and iron projects being asynchronous is one way that we try to address that challenge. 
so that you don't have to have a really strong internet connection to connect synchronously. Another way that we try to address the internet connection challenge is by allowing classrooms to participate in various formats. So it doesn't have to be every single student connected to a computer and on the internet. It can be the students doing the project together and reading the post together, um, but all of the communication happens from one computer or one connection. But that is definitely a common challenge that our teachers face around the world um, is access to technology, access to computers and equipment, and access to strong internet connection. Great, Rose from Brazil um, has worked with teachers from Canada, Pakistan, Argentina, Peru, US, Australia, Lebanon, whew, Belarus. Um, that is a long list um, and worked with them and connected her students with theirs. Great. Sylvia Luna from West Virginia um, connected with a classroom in Morocco very recently. It was interesting and culturally beneficial to her students um, and had some personal connections there, which is fantastic. Great, thank you all for sharing your experiences and your stories having connected with teachers from around the world. The next question that I have for you is, how do you see a global project fitting into your classroom and your curriculum? So many of you have just started a school year um, and I'm interested to know um, what, what has your thinking been around starting a new global project? How do you see something fitting in to your current curriculum and your current classroom. And included in this, share any ideas you might have for new projects or collaboration. I haven't seen any hands up, but if anybody does want to turn on their microphone and say hello and share, please do. You don't have to hear my voice the whole time. That one seems to be a more challenging question. Maybe we haven't thought as deeply about it or um, have, have to do some exploring in the Collaboration Center to find some project ideas that might connect. Um, if something comes to you that you wanna share, please feel free to type it in the chat box. But I am gonna pop up our next question um, as it is one that um, we gain a lot from understanding other people's challenges and also helping them to solve those challenges. So I would love to hear from people, um, what do you foresee as the biggest challenge in doing this kind of work? And we already had one, one um, touch on this, Mohamedou, is, is the internet connection can be one of those challenges. But I'm curious for others that are on, what you foresee as one of the biggest challenges in incorporating global projects into your classroom. Or if you work with teachers, what are some of the challenges that you've seen?
Great. So one that just popped in was reliability regarding collaborative activities. Um, and Haifa, I would love for you to give a little more information about that um, and provide us some context. Um, I think I know what you mean um, as far as depending on partner classrooms and partners and global partners to um, initiate and continue collaboration can oftentimes be a challenge for others. When you are communicating and collaborating across countries, across time zones, across cultures, um, it takes a lot of extra work to make that collaboration successful. Um, and so I definitely echo and hear that as a challenge um, as far as relying on collaborative partners to make a project successful. And on that note, if that's what you were um, referring to, if anybody else has any advice or ideas for how to ensure stronger partnerships and be able to rely on, on partners during collaborative projects, we would love to hear them. Rose shared on Facebook um, that as a language te teacher, she sees projects as a way of making her students communicate in the target language and enjoying it, getting in touch with other kids and learning beyond languages. That is a um, great way that you might incorporate projects, um, global projects into your classroom and the benefit of it. So thank you for those that are answering the previous question as well. And we do have many, many teachers in our IRON network that utilize these global projects as a language learning tool, particularly those that might be learning English as a foreign or second language. It is a great way to connect and learn a language authentically. All right, and some other project ideas coming in for the year. This is fantastic. Um, Sylvia Luna created a project for this coming year um, that was inspired by another iron educator. Um, and my Spanish is not good enough to translate this. Cultura a través del cine. Um, if you want to translate that for me, that would be fantastic. Um, I believe it is a cultural project related to movies and films. Um, and she would love to get this project off the ground and promoted to others. Um, and I'm assuming the project will be conducted in Spanish, which is a great resource and opportunity for other Spanish speaking classrooms and youth to engage. Thank you, Sylvia. Great, others that are contributing to the benefits of these global projects are um, finding it very engaging and inspiring for students and teachers um, to invite the real world inside of their classroom. I think that is one um, huge benefit um, and essential element to project-based learning um, is connecting it to the authentic and real world. And then when you add that global component, um, it, just, it just seamlessly comes together as incorporating global issues around the world that students are engaged and motivated to learn about. Fantastic. Another challenge that's coming in um, is having, um, but having in all the projects is the internet connection. Again, similar challenges um, is internet connection. Um, in different parts of the world and being able to um, create a sustained partnership and collaboration um, when your internet connection isn't as strong. And like I said before, a great way to address that challenge is um, having students participate in various ways where they don't need to be connected to the internet um, as often and in such volume. Great. Well, please feel free to continue typing in um, any ideas you have, any encouraging words for global projects, as well as um, any challenges 
um, that you might face in doing this work is most likely others face the same challenge and others may have innovative and fantastic solutions for you. Um, so to wrap up tonight, I did want to share a few quick resources with everybody and just leave a few minutes for any um, last minute questions or comments that people may have. So some great resources for getting started in iEARN. The first is iEARN.org. Um, explore, spend some time on our website learning about the projects, learning about the professional development opportunities, um, reading stories of educators around the world that have successfully um, implemented global projects in their classroom. And then if you are an IRON member already or you are ready to join, sign into the Collaboration Center and explore all of the projects and um, join, join a project with your classroom um, and get started. Uh, for those that are new members on here, tutorials.iron.org is a fantastic resource for navigating the platform. If you are going to introduce your students to a global project, you will need to be comfortable with navigating the platform and the technology before teaching them to do so. So um, use this resource to learn about how to add students to your account, about how to sign in, about how to participate in a discussion, how to share a picture with others. Um, a lot of really fantastic tutorials here to help you get started. And as I said before, we just released the 2018-2019 Iron Project book. So you can um, follow this link or just go to our website and find the project book. You can download it in digital form if you'd like. You can view it as an ebook, and then you can also search all of our 100 plus projects in the Collaboration Center. And lastly, a fantastic resource for teachers getting started in this work is our iEARNS um, Teacher's Guide. And you can find it in digital copy at guide.iron.org. We also have some fantastic physical copies floating around that some of you may have or have seen before. And this is a great way to get started, not even just in iEARN, but in how to um, develop a project plan for a global project, how to find partners, how to engage in online dialogue, and how to prepare your students to do so. Um, so guide.iron.org is another fantastic resource for those looking to get started. All right, so we have just a few minutes left. Um, feel free to type any last comments, ideas, and any questions that you might have in global projects, in getting started with iEARN, um, and anything, you el anything else you might want to share or ask our education team or others who are on today. I am going to mute myself and give you just a second to type in any of those questions that you might have. Also, as these questions are coming in, um, and, I, and I have you all on the line, as, as we're sharing these challenges and ideas, we're getting new ideas for future ways that we can support teachers and future topics for webinars like this. So also feel free to type in the chat box any ideas you might have for future webinar topics, whether it is addressing the challenge of technology and connectivity. Um, maybe it is, building those strong global partnerships so you can rely on them for your collaborative project work. So please, um, as you're typing in any questions or um, last minute thoughts, also feel free to type in any ideas you have for future webinar topics or needs you might have.
do see a question coming in from Mohamedou about how, how can I have other teachers to help me on my projects in the Collaboration Center? Um, and I'm wondering, Mohamedou, if you are asking how you can find partners to do the collaborative projects with you, or if you are looking for help in how to get started. Um, if you're asking how to find other teachers to participate in a project with you, um, there's a couple ways to do that. You can post in our teachers forum and post what you, who you are and what you're interested and maybe what project you might wanna join and you can find partners that way. And then you can connect with one or two other teachers in the IRON network and join a project together. That way, once you've started that project, you already have a built-in partnership and engagement um, that you can continue during the project. Another way to find partners is in our educator search. You can search for other educators in the network that might have similar interests or age level to you, and you can reach out to them. Great, and I do see a few questions coming in specific to our online course. So if you are asking those questions, I encourage you to um, shoot us an email or send us an email at pd at us.iron.org and we can help you with our online course. We do run two online courses a year. Um, our, our first one is underway right now in its second week. And we will be running another round of online courses starting in February 2019. So if you are interested in gaining more professional development on how to get started in global projects and online collaboration, um, feel free to um, inquire about our online course. Registration will open up um, this November or December. But if you're interested in learning more about our professional development and our online course, you can also email pd at us.iron.org. And if you have any additional questions following up from this webinar, if you have questions about becoming a member um, of iEARN, feel free to reach out to us. You can email memberships at us.iron.org to ask any of your additional questions um, about becoming a member or general questions about iEARN. We would love to hear from you. Oh, great. And I see a suggestion coming in for future webinars of evaluating global project work, which is a fantastic idea. Thank you for contributing that. Great. Okay, so before we say goodbye, we would love to invite you to join us for our next webinar. Um, our next webinar will be in November and it will take place, I apologize, I have to double check my calendar to make sure that I'm giving you the right date. Our next webinar will take place on November, November 7th. Um, and it will be similar to this webinar in that um, we will direct it towards new members as well as people interested in iEARN. Um, we might have a few guest speakers on to talk about their experience with iEARN, but in November and again in December, we are gearing all of our educator webinars for those who are new to global projects with iEARN and those who are interested in learning more. So feel free to join us again um, on November 7th if you would like to or share out with others in your community and circles who may be interested in joining us. Great. So on that note, I want to thank all of you for joining us, those that joined us on Zoom, as well as those that are viewing and participating on Facebook Live. Thank you for those who stayed up very late in the evening where it is for you to join and participate. Um, and it is always exciting to hear from teachers and trainers in the field who are doing this work. And I hope it was helpful for all of you to learn a little bit more about iron projects and how to get started. 
Again, feel free to send us an email at memberships at us.iron.org or pd at us.iron.org if you have any follow-up questions or would like further information.